Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Zero Davila. Welcome back to Save Our System IT. Today we'll continue with part number 21 of our BusyBox series. The Telnet command is used for interactive communication with another host using the Telnet protocol. It begins in command mode where it prints a Telnet command prompt. If Telnet is invoked with a host argument, it performs an open command implicitly. Once a connection has been opened, the Telnet will attempt to enable the Telnet line mode option. If this fails, then Telnet will revert to one of the two input modes, either character at a time or old line by line depending on what the remote system supports. When line mode is enabled, character processing is done on the local system, under the control of the remote system. When input editing or character echoing is to be disabled, the remote system will relay that information. The remote system will also relay changes to any special characters that happen on the remote system, so that they can take effect on the local system. In character at a time mode, most text type is immediately sent to the remote host for processing. In old line by line mode, all text is echoed locally, and normally only completed lines are sent to the remote host. The local echo character, initially a carrot capital E, may be used to turn off and on the local echo. Uh, this uh, would mostly be used to enter passwords without the password being echoed. If the line mode option is enabled or if the local character's toggle is true, the default for all line by line, the user's quit, interrupt, and flush characters are trapped locally and sent as Telnet protocol sequences to the remote side. If line mode has ever been enabled, then the user's uh, SUSP and EOF are also sent as Telnet protocol sequences and quit is sent as a Telnet abort instead of break. There are options which cause this action to flush subsequent output to the terminal until the remote host acknowledges the Telnet sequences and flush previous terminal input in case of quit and interrupt. Test is used as part of the conditional execution of shell commands. Test exits with the status determined by expression. Placing the expression between square brackets is the same as testing the expression of the test command. To see the exit status at the command prompt, echo the value of a dollar sign question mark. A value of zero means the expression was evaluated as true. A value of one means the expression was evaluated as false. TFTP is a client for the Trivial File Transfer Protocol, which can be used to transfer files to and from remote machines, including some very minimalistic, usually embedded systems. The remote host may be specified on the command line, in which case TFTP uses host as the default host for future transfers. The TFTP protocol provides no provisions for authentication or security. Therefore, the remote server will probably implement some kind of access restriction or firewalling. These uh, access restrictions are likely to be site and server specific. The time command is one of the lesser known Linux commands, but it can be used to show how long a command takes to run. This is useful if you're a developer and you want to test the performance of your programmer's script. The statistics uh, shown show the total time it took to run the command, the amount of time that was spent in user mode, and the amount of time spent in kernel mode. If you have a program that you have written and you want to work on performance, you can run it along with the time command over and over and try to improve on the statistics. By default, the output is displayed at the end of the program, but perhaps you want the output to go to a file. All of the switches for the time command must be specified before the command you wish to run. If you are performance tuning, then you may wish to append the output from the time command to the same file over and over so that you can see a trend. Timeout runs a command with a time limit, so it will start the command and kill it if it's uh, still running after a number of seconds. The suffix may be S for seconds, which is the default, M for minutes, H for hours, or D for days. Mandatory arguments to long options are mandatory for short options too. If the command time is out, then the exit status will be 124. Otherwise, it will exit to the status of the command. If no uh, signal is specified, it will send a term signal upon timeout. The term signal kills any process that does not block or catch that signal. For other processes, it may be necessary to use the kill signal, since uh, this signal cannot be caught. The top program provides a dynamic real-time view of a running system. It can display system summary information as well as a list of processes or threads currently being managed by the kernel. The types of system summary information shown and the types, order, and size of information displayed for tasks are all configurable by the user. Each of the following areas are individually controlled through interactive commands. The first section consists of a single line displaying the following. The program or window name, depending on display mode, the current time and length of time since the last boot, uh, total number of users, system load average over the last 1, 5, and 15 minutes, and uh, the task and CPU state section uh, consists of a minimum of two lines. In an SMP environment, additional lines can reflect individual CPU state percentages. Line 1 shows the total tasks or threads depending on the state of the thread mode toggle, and that total is further classified as running, sleeping, stopped, or zombie. And line 2 shows CPU state percentages based on the interval since the last refresh, where two labels are shown below. 
Uh, those for more recent kernel versions are shown first. The memory usage portion consists of two lines which may express values in kibibytes, KIB, uh, MIB or GIB, depending on the amount of physical memory. Line 1 reflects physical memory, classified as total used, free or buffers, and line 2 reflects virtual memory, classified as total used, free and cached. The touch command updates the access and modification times of each file to the current system time. If you specify a file that does not already exist, touch creates an empty file with that name, unless the hyphen C or hyphen H option are specified. And if the file argument is a dash, it's handled specially and causes touch to change the times of the file associated with the standard output. And last but not least, the tr command automatically translates, meaning that it substitutes or maps one set of characters to another. The tr utility copies the standard input to the standard output with substitution or deletion of selected characters. The command tr followed by the options hyphen capital C, C, S or U and followed by two strings separated by an empty space means that the characters in the first string are translated into the characters of the second string, where the first character in string 1 is translated into the first character in string 2 and so on. If string 1 is longer than string 2, the last character found in string 2 is duplicated until string 1 is exhausted. And that's about it for today, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, any questions you might have are to be left down in the comment section or on our website www.sosit.co. Again that's www.sosit.co. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.